My name is Lakshmi Neelakantan and I am dealing with module 8, Exceptions to GATT. The objectives of module 8 are as follows. To understand the scope of article 20 of GATT, the test to be applied under article 20, the applicability of articles 20A, 20B and 20G of GATT, the nature of the requirements of the SHAPU to article 20 and article 21 of GATT. The prior knowledge you require for module 8 are as follows, a brief understanding of the scope of present day WTO, an understanding of the basic principles in GATT 1994 and a brief idea of the concept of exceptions under GATT. The structure of module 8 will be as follows, first we will deal with uh, the exceptions in article 20 in GATT 1994, second we will seek to understand the scope of application of article 20 by answering certain questions that or inquiries that may be undertaken under article 20 and the third is the scope of article 21 of GATT. First an introduction to article 20. The international trade system has multiple objectives, reduction and elimination of tariff and non-tariff barriers, efficient dispute settlement, uniform administration of trade remedies measures and protection of intellectual property rights are all commonly stated objectives. However, the WTO also exists to protect the sovereignty and policy space of a country to enact measures which may be inconsistent with GATT but is otherwise necessary for the well-being of the country in question. The negotiators foresaw such an eventuality and drafted clauses relating to exceptions to its WTO obligations. This module addresses the exceptions contained in Article 20 and 21 of GATT 1994. This module traces the meaning and scope of Articles 20 and 21, the legal tests for a valid defense under the same and the relevant debates in international trade law relating to public morals, environment, etc. A discussion of Article 20 will begin with the text. The text of Article 20 goes as follows. Subject to the requirement that such measures are not applied in a manner which would constitute a means of arbitrary or unjustifiable discrimination between countries where the same conditions prevail or the disguised restriction on international trade. Nothing in this agreement shall be construed to prevent the adoption or enforcement by any contracting party of measures a necessary to protect public morals, b necessary to protect human, animal or plant life or health, c relating to the importations or exportations of gold or silver, d necessary to secure compliance with laws or regulations which are not inconsistent with the provisions of this agreement including those relating to customs enforcement, the enforcement of monopolies and operated under paragraph 4 of article 2 and article 17, the protection of patents, trademarks and copyright and the prevention of deceptive practices e relating to the products of prison labor, f imposed for the protection of national treasures of artistic, historic or archaeological value, g relating to the conservation of exhaustible natural resources if such measures are made effective in conjunction with restrictions on domestic production or consumption, h undertaken in pursuance of obligations under any intergovernmental commodity agreement which conforms to criteria submitted to the contracting parties and not disapproved by them or which is itself so submitted and not so disapproved. i involving restrictions on exports of domestic materials necessary to ensure essential quantities of such materials to a domestic processing industry during periods when the domestic price of such materials is held below the world price as part of a governmental stabilization plan provided that such restrictions shall not operate to increase the exports of or the protection afforded to such domestic industry and shall not depart from the provisions of this agreement relating to non-discrimination essential to the acquisition or distribution of products in general or local short supply provided that any such measure shall be consistent with the principle that all contracting parties are entitled to an equitable share of the international supply of such products and that any such measures which are inconsistent with the other provisions of the agreement 
shall be discontinued as soon as the conditions giving rise to them have ceased to exist. The contracting parties shall review the need for the subparagraph not later than 30th June 1960. So, it can be seen that articles 20 C, H, I and J relate to trade in gold and silver, obligations under international commodities agreements, efforts to ensure essential quantities of materials to a domestic processing industry and acquisition of products in general or local short supply. Till date, these provisions have seldom been used by countries and therefore detailed discussion is not devoted to the same. The na now we deal with the nature of Article 20 exceptions. The nature of Article 20 is such that measures which are otherwise inconsistent with the provisions of GATT may be justified if they fall within the categories listed in Article 20 and otherwise fulfill the conditions laid down in Article 20. The GATT panel in US Section 337 Tariff Act stated in paragraph 5.9 that the defense in Article 20 is a limited and conditional exception to GATT provisions. The GATT panel used the term limited because the list of exceptions in Article 20 is exhaustive and, and the term conditional because Article 20 only provides for the justification of a GATT inconsistent measure when the conditions set forth in Article 20 are fulfilled. It is important to note that Article 20 can only be invoked by a member when a measure has already been found to be inconsistent with another provision of GATT. From the above, it may also be seen that Article 20 essentially acts as a balancing provision between trade liberaliza liberalization, market access and non-discrimination and societal values and interests. The nature and function of Article 20 was generally held to be a separate and independent analysis by the appellate body in Thailand cigarettes where the appellate body made the following observations in paragraph 173, quote, we have difficulties understanding why the panel's disposition of the Philippines claim under article 3.4 should depend on the panel's disposition of Thailand's defense under article 20D. It is true that in examining a specific measure, a panel may be called upon to analyze a substantive obligation and an affirmative defense and to apply both to that measure. It is also true that such an exercise will require a panel to find and apply a line of equilibrium between a substantive obligation and an exception. Yet this does not render that panel's analysis of that obligation and the exception a single and integrated one. On the contrary, an analysis of whether a measure infringes an obligation necessarily precedes and is distinct from the further and separate assessment of whether the such, such measure is otherwise justified. Thus, we reject Thailand's request to reverse the panel's Article 3.4 finding on the grounds that the panel erred in its analysis of Thailand's Article 20 defense. Now, we will understand the scope of application of Article 20 by answering specific questions relating to Article 20. The first one is whether Article 20 can be used to invoke to justify inconsistencies with other WTO agreements apart from GATT 1994. So, in China publications and audiovisual products, the appellate body considered the question of whether measures inconsistent with China's obligations under its accession protocol could be justified under GATT Article 20A. Here, the appellate body considered the wording of paragraph 5.1 to China's accession protocol which stated that without prejudice to China's right to regulate trade in a manner consistent with the WTO agreement. The appellate body held in paragraphs 221 and 223 that this was a reference to its power to subject international commerce to regulation and the measures that China had sought to justify have a clearly discernible and objective link to China's trade regulation. As a result, the appellate body concluded that in this particular case, China could resort to Article 20 to justify its measures under its accession protocol. The question of whether Article 20 could be invoked to justify inconsistencies with other WTO agreements rose again in subsequent disputes. The appellate body in China raw materials and China rare earths 
dismissed China's claim that Article 20 was available to justify a measure inconsistent with paragraph 11.3 of its accession protocol. It may be noted that China raw materials and China rare earths dealt with a different set of measures in addition to the fact that paragraph 5.1 and 11.3 of the accession protocol was diff had contained different language. The appellate body considered the ruling in China audio publications and audio visual products and held that there was no language in paragraph 11.3 that was similar to the language found in paragraph 5.1 of the accession protocol. Now we go on to the test which is required to justify a measure under article 20. Article 20 carries with it a two tier test to determine whether a GATT inconsistent measure can be justified under any one of its provisions. The test for a measure to be justified under Article 20 is to first satisfy the requirements of the specific sub clause under Article 20 consisting of paragraphs A to J and second to satisfy the requirements of the chapeau to Article 20. This was highlighted by the appellate body in US gasoline page 22 by way of the following observation, quote, having concluded in the preceding section that the baseline establishment rules of the gasoline rule fall within the terms of article 20 G, we come to the question of whether those rules also meet the requirements of the chapeau of article 20. In order that the justifying protection of article 20 may be extended to it, the measure at issue must not only come under one or another of the particular exceptions in paragraphs A to J listed under article 20, but it must also satisfy the requirements imposed by the opening clauses of article 20. The analysis is in other words two tiered, first provisional justification by reason of characterization of the measure under article 20 G, and second further appraisal of the same measure under introductory clauses of article 20. Additionally, the appellate body in US shrimp in paragraphs 119 to 120 clarify the hierarchical nature of the test that first it must be examined whether the measure falls un within one of the categories enumerated by article 20 and second the measure must be tested for conformity with the chapeau of article 20. First we will deal with article 20A or which is more commonly known as the public models exception. Article 20A includes measures that are necessary to protect public models. Article 20A exceptions are very rarely used before panels and the appellate body. In China publications and audiovisual products, the panel adopted the meaning of public models as the one assigned to it by the panel in US gambling in paragraph 6.461 and 6.465, which found that the term public models comprises of the following. It denotes a standard of right and wrong conduct maintained by or on behalf of a community or a nation. The content and meaning of public morals can vary from country to country and depend on a wide range of factors including social, cultural, religious and ethnic values. And third, members should be given the scope to define and apply for themselves the concept of public morals according to their systems and values. Recently, in the EC seal products dispute, the question of Article 20A came up for consideration before the panel and the appellate body. The dispute essentially consisted of EU regulations that prohibit the import and placing on the market of seal products. The EU seal regime had essentially provided for various exceptions to the prohibition if certain conditions were met, including for seal products derived from hunts conducted by Inuit or indigenous communities which is called the IC exception and hunts conducted for marine resource management purposes which is called the MRM exception. With regard to EU's defense that the measures were justified under article 20A of GATT, the panel held that the EU seal regime was not justified under article 20A because it failed to meet the requirements under the chapeau of article 20. The appellate body disagreed with the panel's reasoning and method of interpretation but also ultimately held that the measure was not justified under article 20 of GATT due to the following reasons. First, that EU did not show that the manner in which the EU seal regime treated seal products derived from IC hunts as compared to seal products derived from commercial hunts can be reconciled with the objective of addressing EU public moral concerns regarding seal welfare. 
Second, the presence of considerable ambiguity in the subsistence and partial use criteria of the IC exception. The, and the, this was not acceptable due to the ambiguity of the criteria and the broad discretion enjoyed by the authorities in applying them. And the seed products which should be characterized as commercial punts could potentially enter the EU market under the IC exception. And third, that the EU can, had not made comparable efforts to facilitate the access of the Canadian Inuit punts to the IC exception as it did with respect to the Greenlandic Inuit. The next important exception under Article 20 is the subclause Article um, sub, subclause B dealing with the exception under Article 20B. Article 20B concerns measures which are necessary to protect human, animal or plant life or health. A measure may fulfill the requirements of Article 20B if it satisfies two criteria. The policy objective pursued by the measure is the protection of the life or health of humans, animals or plants. Second, the measure is necessary to fulfill that policy objective. While the first prong of the two-tier test has not posed significant interpretative problems, the second requirement has proved to be quite complex. The concept of the least trade restrictive alternative test is also important in an Article 20b analysis. The least trade restrictive alternative test essentially seeks to compare the measure with possible alternatives to the measure in order to determine if the alternative measures were equally efficacious in achievement of the objective pursued. For instance, in Brazil retreated tyres, paragraphs 210 and 211, the appellate body found that the import ban on retreated tyres was apt to produce a material contribution to the achievement of its objective, which was the reduction in waste tyre volumes. The appellate body also found that the proposed alternatives which consisted of waste management and disposal measures were not real alternatives to the import ban, which could prevent the accumulation of tyres. The appellate body in ECS Berstos in paras 168, 172 and 178 also outlined important principles to be kept in mind while applying the necessity test in Article 20b. The measure at issue was a French ban on asbestos and asbestos products which the appellate body held was not inconsistent with the obligations under Article 3, 4 of GATT. The appellate body highlighted in EC asbestos the following principle which must be kept in mind. First, the more important the societal value pursued by the measure is and the more important, the more this measure contributes to the promotion of this value, the more necessary that such a measure may be considered to be. Second, in determining whether an alternative measure is reasonably available, several factors must be taken into account along with the difficulty of implementation. The appellate body subsequently confirmed this understanding in Brazil retreated tyres that a member cannot reasonably be expected to employ an alternative measure if that measure does not allow it to achieve the desired level of protection with respect to the policy objective pursued. It is for the WTO me member in question to determine the level of protection of health or environment that each member considers appropriate. The appellate body held that a member is not obliged in introducing a health policy to follow a majority scientific opinion and a panel is not required to reach its conclusion on a preponderant weight of evidence. Article 20G exception. Article 20G concerns measures relating to the conservation of exhaustible natural resources. Article G requires a three-pronged test necessitating that a measure satisfies the following criteria. First, that it relates to the conservation of exhaustible natural resources. The appellate body held in US Shrimp in paragraphs 128 to 131 that a broad evolutionary interpretation of the concept of exhaustible natural resources must be adopted. The appellate body also held that the scope of exhaustible natural resources extend to all resources whether living or non-living and the obligations in Article 20G must be read in light of its contemporary meaning. The second that the measure relates to the conservation of relates to the conservation of exhaustible natural resources. The appellate body clarified again in US Shrimp in paragraph 141 that Article 20, 20G requires a close and real relationship between the measure and the policy objective 
thus meaning that the means employed must be reasonably related to the end pursued which is the conservation of an exhaustible natural resource. The third is that the measure must be made effective in conjunction with restrictions on domestic production and consumption. With regard to the third requirement, the appellate body held in US gasoline pages 20 to 21 that while article 20 G does not require domestic and imported products to be treated identically, it requires that they be treated in an even handed manner. Furthermore, in China rare earths, the appellate body found that the panel had erred when it is suggested that even handedness is a separate requirement that must be fulfilled in addition to the requirements expressly provided for in article 20 G. However, the appellate body also considered that the error did not taint the remaining elements of the panel's interpretation of the second clause of subpara G. In China rare earths, basically the measure at issue related to a quantitative limit or a quota on the amount of rare earths, tungsten and molybdenum that can be exported in a given period. Although it recognized that such restrictions were inconsistent with GATT 1994, China argued that they were justified under the exception in Article 20G since they relate to the conservation of an exhaustible natural resource. The panel found that China's export quotas were designed to achieve industrial policy goals rather than conservation. China appealed the panel's interpretation and application of Article G regarding its findings that the export quotas at issue were not measures relating to the conservation of an exhaustible natural resource and were not made effective in conjunction with restrictions on domestic production or consumption. The appellate body found that, contrary to what China alleged, the panel did not consider itself bound to limit, it, limit its analysis to the examination of the design and structure of the measures. Rather, the panel had considered that it should focus on the measures design and structure rather than on, our, on their effects in the marketplace. Now we come to the Shapu to Article 20 and the test under, under the Shapu. We recall that every measure tested for consistency under G Article 20 of GATT is to first satisfy the requirements under the individual subclause of Article 20 and then satisfy the requirements of the Shapu of Article 20. The Shapu is often the most difficult and controversial requirement to be satisfied in an a Article 20 inquiry. In a nutshell, the Shapu to Article 20. It is an expression of the good faith principle in international law. The appellate body report in US Shrimp in paragraph 158 made this observation. The object and purpose of the Shapu to Article 20 is to avoid that provisionally justified measures under a subclause to Article 20 are applied in such a way as, as would constitute a misuse or abuse of exceptions under Article 20. The requirements set out in the Shapu have been interpreted in the following manner by panels and the appellate body. First, that a means of arbitrary or unjustified discrimination between countries where the same conditions prevail should be present in the application of the measure. The appellate body decided in US Shrimp that discrimination may result when the same measure is applied to countries where different conditions prevail. When a measure is applied without regard for the difference in conditions between countries, and this measure is applied in a rigid and inflexible manner, the application of the measure may constitute arbitrary discrimination within the meaning of the Shapu to Article 20. This has been observed by the appellate body in its report in US Shrimp, paragraphs 164 to 165 and 177. Furthermore, a measure also has to satisfy the test unjustifiable discrimination of Article 20 in US gasoline in pages 28 to 29. The appellate body dealt with the meaning and held the measure to have satisfied such a requirement. In arriving at its decision, the appellate body held that the resulting discrimination from the measure must have been foreseen and was not merely inadvertent or unavoidable. Therefore, it may be noted that the appellate body emphasized on the deliberate nature of such discrimination. The second requirement is the disguised restriction on international trade. The appellate body in US gasoline on page 25 held that the requirements of arbitrary or unjustifiable discrimination and disguised restriction on international trade may be read side by side as they impart meaning to each other and disguised restriction includes disguised discrimination. The appellate body also held that disguised restriction 
includes restrictions amounting to arbitrary and unjustifiable discrimination in international trade under the guise of a measure formally within the terms of an exception listed in Article 20. The panel in ECS Pestos, paragraph 8.236, additionally clarified that a restriction will constitute an abuse if its compliance is to conceal, if, it, if a compliance with such measure is to conceal the pursuit of trade restrictive objectives. However, bearing in mind the fact that the aim of the measure may not be easily ascertained, the subprotective application of a measure may be discerned from its design, architecture and structure. Now we come to the last part of this presentation which is the scope of Article 21 of GATT. Article 21 is entitled Security Exceptions and is worded in the following manner, quote, nothing in this agreement shall be construed a to require any contracting party to furnish any information, the disclosure of which it considers contrary to its essential security interests or to prevent any contracting party from taking any action which it considers necessary for the protection of its essential security interests. There is a sub clause under clause B, the first of which says relating to fissionable materials or the materials from which they are derived, relating to the traffic in arms, ammunition and implements of war and to such traffic in other goods and materials as is carried on directly or indirectly for the purpose of applying a, supplying a military establishment. Three, taken in time of war or other emergency in international relations or subclause C to prevent any contracting party from taking any action in pursuance of its obligation and obligations under the United Nations Charter for the maintenance of international peace and security. Article 21 mainly deals with security exceptions to trading obligations mainly consisting of measures imposing disclosure requirements, security interests of a WTO member country etc. Till date, Article 21 has not been invoked before a panel or the appellate body. However, there are some instances in which Article 21 has been invoked as a justification for the measure. In 1985, the US imposed a trade embargo on Nicaragua. The US considered itself strongly opposed to the communist Sandinistas who were in power in Nicaragua at the time. Nicaragua argued that the trade embargo imposed by the US was inconsistent with Articles 1, 2, 5. 11, 13 and part 4 of GATT and could not be justified under article 21. The US argued that article 21 left it to each contracting party to judge what action it considered necessary for the protection of its essential security interests. A panel was established but the panel concluded that its terms of reference did not allow the examination of arguments under article 21 and therefore reached no conclusion. In summary, module 8, is, module 8 essentially deals with the scope of article 20 the various provisions under Article 20, the test to be applied for a measure to be justified under Article 20, as well as a brief summary of Article 21. The detailed uh, discussion of the disputes referencing Article 20, as well as the test to be applied for various measures, have been outlined in Module 8 available online on ePartshala. Thank you.